While Elementor Pro has some really solid dynamic tools that allow us to do some awesome things, we do have holes in the tool set and we need to add in some third party options until Elementor decides to fill in those holes. Yes, Elementor, I'm looking right at you. With that in mind, I've got three totally free options that provide varying degrees of control on when and how to show or hide parts of your web pages. Now, while I've covered some of these in the past, they have received some significant updates recently, which gave me a reason to come back and cover them again. So let's start off with the simplest and the newest option. The first plugin on the list today is Visibility for Elementor from 7th Queen and is one of the more simple options I'll be covering in this video. However, there are many times where you just don't need that crazy level of control that some of the other Visibility Logic plugins actually offer. You simply want to use some really simple logic to show or hide content to logged in or logged out users or specific user roles and Visibility for Elementor does that with absolute ease. Getting started with visibility for Elementor is incredibly simple. All we need to do is make sure it's installed, which I've already done. Select the widget that you want on your page. For example, we'll take this button at the top, this reservation button, and we can hop over to advanced. And inside there, we have a new option called visibility control. Open that up. You can see by default, it's disabled. All we need to do is select it, switch it on. And now we've got two lots of conditions, visible for and hidden for. So let's just say we only want this reservation to be available to people that are logged in users. We can simply say visible for, select logged in users, and we've set the visibility up for it. So now, as long as someone's logged in, they'll see this reservation button. If they're not logged in, they won't see it. Simple as that. You can add additional options on here as well. So you may say this is for logged in users, you might say it's for editors, contributors, subscribers. If you've got other different kind of levels inside your setup of WordPress, they'll be available to you too. Let's just disable that option. If we come down and say hidden for, you can see we have the same set of options and this is kind of just the reverse of it. So we might want to say this is hidden for guests and we'll choose that option and you can see now it's hidden for guests. You also notice that once you select, you see the visible for or hidden for, that's the only option we have available. It disables the other option. So that's really all there is to it. If you want something really simple, this might be the perfect option. So you can show and hide based upon the user role that's being used or if someone's a guest or logged in user. Now, you're not restricted to using this only on widgets. You can select sections, come to advanced, and inside there you can see we still have visibility control inside there, and we've got all the same options. So you might want to hide the entire menu based upon someone being logged in and have a different menu for someone that's being logged out, those kinds of things. So there's plenty of uses. It's a really simple plugin. It's totally free, and it might be more than enough for what you want to do. And that really is all there is to visibility for Elemental by 7th Queen. So while this is a really simple plugin, you could easily combine this with some other different tools that allow you to take payment, for example, or to set up user roles, for example, a subscriber or someone's a paid member, something like that. And then what you could do is you could use this plugin to easily hide content for people that don't match a particular member role or show it if they're logged in and they have the right access. So you could combine this with various different other tools that allow you to, like say, take that payment and set a user role or level and then use this to control exactly what they can or can't see. So even though this plugin looks really simple and looks like it only does some really simplistic things, with a little creativity, you could do a lot more with it. So check it out, take a look at it. It might be perfect for a project you have on hand right now. Next up is my old friend and a plugin I've recommended in many, many tutorials, Dynamic Conditions from RTO. Again, this is another fairly simple dynamic visibility plugin that lets you do one thing and do it well. Control the visibility of elemental widgets and sections. So let's go ahead, install the plugin and see how to get started using dynamic conditions. So dynamic conditions gives us a lot more control over what we can do. It's a much more advanced kind of plugin. So let's just say, for example, we're working on creating the archive for our particular website. And as part of that template, we want to make sure that if no image is uploaded, we can kind of manage that, what happens, whether we hide things and those kinds of things. So let's just say we're going to take this image, we'll select it, we'll hop over into advanced again, and inside there you can see we have dynamic conditions. Let's open that up. 
So you can see we already have a lot more information and a lot more ways we can control things. So first of all, we've got the dynamic tag. Now this is kind of leads to a little bit of confusion because it's not the most intuitive way of working. But what this really allows us to do is choose what we want to use as the thing to check. And as you can see, once we open that up, we now have a lot more options inside you. The other thing to consider as well is if you've got extra plugins like Advanced Custom Fields, for example, which is supported, we'll also have ACF entries inside there. So you will see a lot more options based upon what plugins you may have installed. But by default, you're still going to see things like the post, you're going to see things like the archive, the site, media, those kinds of things. So just using a really, really simple example, the first thing we need to do is choose what it is we want to check for. So this example, we're going to say featured image data, we'll select that. And then we can choose what we want to do, do we want to show something or hide something you can see show or hide. So this just allows us to choose the kind of qualifier, you know, what do we want to check against the dynamic tag? What do we want to do if that check is true or false? And then we can set the condition. So you can see, now we can say, how do we want to check? And as you can see, there are a lot of options. And if you come from this from the past, an older version of some of my older videos where I've used this quite a lot, you'll see we have some new options, things like in array, in array contains. But without going into too much technical detail, because I think it's kind of beyond what I want to cover in here, if you're using things like ACF and the gallery option, you can save your information in there as an array. An array basically means there's one entry in the database and the values are separated by things like commas. That means you can check for values inside this. So you can see we've got things like in array or in array contains. So it does an array of information contain a value we want to check against. Lots of really useful and quite powerful options. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up really simply because I think I just want to show you why these tools are so useful. And we're going to say is empty. So we're going to just say hide. So featured image hide when condition is met. In other words, is empty. So there we go. So we're going to say if the featured image is empty, we don't have one, just hide this section, this, this block. So don't worry about this little weird glitch going on. It's just kind of like the way that it, it updates every now and again. So what you can do then is you can see we've got hide only content. This just allows us to choose whether it's only the content is hidden and the container that that content would sit in is still available. Therefore, you could end up maybe with a blank space, which would look a bit odd. Or do you want to hide the container as well? By default, you can see it's set so it'll hide everything, the container, the content, those kinds of things. But you have the option there if you want to, to enable that. You've also got some expert things, which I don't really think I need to cover in this video. And you can do things like hide the wrapper, hide other elements, and you can even give this widget an ID. So there's lots of options inside there. And this opens up more control over how you want to manage showing and hiding various different elements. And again, works incredibly well if you're dealing with something like templates that I use a lot where we're de designing entire websites with Elementor Pro's theme builder. This gives you really loads and loads of control over how and when you want to display and hide things. Gives you just lots of options to kind of make sure that you cover all bases. You don't end up with a design that falls apart if something isn't included. Now, clear that condition, there's something else I want to show you, and that is that there's a lot more that you might not be aware of that's hidden inside some of the different dynamic tags you can choose. Let me just show you. Let's create another dynamic tag and let's scroll down until we get to something like the user info, for example. If we open that up, we get the little wrench icon. So you might be thinking, well, user info, what info are we actually referring to? If you click the little wrench icon, we now have a new field entry, which allows us to choose ID, display name, username, and so on. So we can, if we want to check against a specific user's ID or display name or username and do things from there. So there's a lot of extra options inside you. And if we again, if we clear this out and we choose something else, for example, things like a request parameter, we can click and you can see we can choose between get post and query variables. So if you want to pass values by the actual URL itself by using either get or post or a query variable, you have controls over how you want to display or hide things based upon that information as well. Now, this is kind of going a lot more technical into what you can kind of do. But I just wanted to demonstrate that if you're a more intermediate advanced user, and you're looking for something that has a lot more control than you may first think, 
Have a look at dynamic conditions. There's a ton of options in there since the last time I covered this. Check it out. I think you'll be surprised. Now, next on our list is the powerhouse that is dynamic visibility for Elemental from the makers of dynamic content for Elemental. Now, if you know me and you know the channel, you'll know that I create a lot of sponsored content for dynamic content for Elemental. Links are in the description if you want to check it out. But that doesn't have anything to do with how powerful and useful this free plugin actually is. While at first it can seem pretty intimidating due to the sheer number of options, it really does offer a lot and a recent update has added even more features to it. Okay, let's just go back to our test website and take a look at some of the options that it offers us. Okay, so we're back into Elemental. I've opened up a page and we access things in a slightly different way this time. You can see we've got a complete entry just for visibility and that's part of the dynamic visibility for Elemental plugin. So let's just take a really simple example to start off with and then take a look at just some of the features that are included in this free plugin. Let's select this entire make a reservation section. We'll choose that hop over into visibility and now we can see what we have and as you can see there's a lot like I say this can be a little bit daunting to start off with just for the sheer number of controls that you have but let me just show you very briefly what options there are and as with all of these different tools if you'd like to see more in-depth tutorials on how to utilize some of these let me know in the comment section below and if there's enough people interested I'll take a look at creating some more comprehensive tutorials covering some of the more intermediate and advanced features that we can use with some of these tools okay so what do we have we can enable and disable the visibility option, so much the same as we've seen with the first and this plugin. We can always hide the elements, so in other words, we want to hide the entire container, everything to do with it, those kinds of things. Keep the HTML, pretty obvious, I think, but you can see underneath we get little help as to tell us exactly what's going on. So I'm not going to cover these too much. We then have two things that are pretty important. The display mode, show or hide. So we just use an icon to do what we saw in drop down lists in the other ones. And then you've got the logical connective. In other words, this is do you want to use and or or. And this is if you're new to this kind of thing, if you have more than one trigger, one more than one visibility condition that you want to use, do you want to use it so they stacked on top of each other? So in other words, it's something and something else, for example, or do you want to use it? That it has to match one or the other. So that's all the logical connective is. It's the and or or switch. And once you start using any of these kind of conditions, visibility conditions, all those kinds of things, any kind of conditional logic will always have the connector of and or or. You'll get used to it. it just becomes part of how all of these kind of work. Then we have the triggers. In other words, what do you want to trigger to do something? Well, we could say we want to keep it really simple. So let's just get rid of everything bar, for example, the user role. So now our trigger is going to be just a user role. So we can say this will only be available to someone or people of a specific user role. And then you can see underneath we have tabs for any of these triggers. So there's no point in setting the posts or anything else. We want to concentrate on the user role. Let's open that up. We can click and we can start typing in just the name of the user role. So we can say, for example, admin and there's administrator. So we can now add an administrator. Do you want to select specific users? Well, you could do that as well. So we can type in, start typing in, and you'll find that you can just put in the user ID, the username, those kinds of things. We can set what a user can do. Manage options, for example. So you can use these to manage various different WordPress options. So you could use this with a front-end dashboard kind of thing, which you know I cover a lot on the channel. And then you can actually set up different things that users could do if you use certain things like an option page up tons of really useful powerful information that we could use and use that for user fields do we want to check for meta fields or keys again tons of options and especially if you're using tools like acf or you know those kinds of tools and you have custom meta fields you might want to check against well you can do that inside here as well we can do things like remote ip we can trigger things to happen on based upon a referrer so if we're coming from a specific website and you might want things to happen if someone comes from google or comes from facebook an advert or a promotion or something well you could do that by using the referrer and as you can see this is a free plugin just these kinds of things, if you want to do marketing and promotion on your website, gives you a ton of options. So we can disable the referrer if we want to. And let's come back up, we'll just change all this. And if we don't worry about too much about the triggers, but we can say, let's have a look at the device and browser, for example. Do you want to check on your responsive? What browser are you going to use? And you can see there's the main browsers inside there. And then you can set up 
what happens when someone comes or uses a specific browser. And you can stack these on top of each other so you can set multiple different triggers. So you might want to set another trigger inside there and say you want to base this on their browser, for example. You can do that, device and browser. So now we can sort of pull in those. You can randomize things. If you're using WooCommerce, which I don't have installed right now, you can just reference things inside WooCommerce and you can do different visibility conditions based upon various different factors in WooCommerce. You even have a fallback option. So you can have this, if none of the conditions are met, you have something happen and you can say there's your fallback and you can add media, you can add visual content. You can even use dynamic tags inside here and you can see there's all the kinds of tags we have available lots and lots of options this is an incredibly comprehensive plugin totally free now if you're looking to fill that gaping gap in elemental pros tool set you now have three incredible free options to choose from and speaking of free if you want to get more out of building websites with elemental and create powerful dynamic wordpress sites check out this playlist next if you've made it this far into the video then why not hit that thumbs up button it really does help me out now while you're at it why not also click the subscribe button and smash the bell icon but if you didn't get value from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. By Jew, I think I got it. Yes. Now, speaking of free, if you want to get more out of building Elemental and learn how to build powerful dynamic WordPress websites, check out this free pray, pray list. And it's that way. It is that way. Now, speaking of free, if you want to get more out of building Elemental and learn how to build a pu building out, out of building Elemental, out of building Elemental, that makes no sense. If you're looking to fill that gaping gap in Elemental Pro's tool set, you now have three, 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 not three, not three. Now, if you're looking to fill that gaping gap in Elemental Pro's tool set, you now have, you now, you, you now have. I'm never going to get this in closing. Never. <sighs> Take 274. How to build powerful, dynamic WordPress websites. Check out this playlist next. Someone there somewhere.